non mi sarei I would never have expected such a tragedy. Two people drowned just 100 meters away from here, another three 100 meters further. It wasn't thunder, it was the mountain crumbling. We were stuck in the house and the water levels kept rising. My grandson froze to death. Extreme weather events are increasing in Europe and around the world, and with them, their devastating effects. Our cities are adapting to climate change, as we see in a trip between Italy, France and Germany. The island of Ischia is marked by a deep wound. Today, in the town of Casamichola, there are no tourists posing against picture-perfect backdrops. In their place stands the debris left by last November's devastating landslide. After a record level of rainfall, a section of the island's mountain broke off and crashed into the houses below, claiming 12 lives. The town of Casamichola is a hub of activity. It will take time to clear and restore the area. One month after the landslide, we met with the most affected residents. 500 of them have been evacuated from their homes. They complain about security measures and downplay the severity of the situation. No other house was damaged. Only this section was affected. The others are all okay. We want to go back to our homes because our houses aren't damaged. I feel safe here. If you move a population like this one, that has been living here for 150 to 200 years, you kill us anyway. But is it really safe? Residents of Casamichola know they live in a natural hazard zone, but they also defend their right to be there. The latest data shows that over 4,500 buildings are in very high or high landslide risk areas and 13,000 people live there. The issue has provoked controversy because much of Ischia's housing was built illegally. What's more, the state is accused of encouraging this trend because of its policy of pardons. The Italian state allows citizens, for a fee, to bring their property in line with the housing regulations. This pardon primarily encourages illegal construction instead of preventing it. The only way to curb it is to tackle the underlying problems that feed it. In other words, decent housing should be affordable without having to resort to illegal construction. With an inquiry ongoing, we still don't know whether the houses hit by the landslide were illegally built. One thing we do know, Many families living in the affected area moved here after losing their homes in the 2017 earthquake. The Casamichola earthquake happened five years ago. They haven't moved a single stone. Residents fear that the government's inaction after the earthquake will be mirrored in their response this time around. Even experts point the finger at authorities, accusing them of neglecting extremely fragile terrain. But what is being done to protect Ischia from natural hazards? In search of answers, we met with a geologist who knows every inch of the island. He told us the authorities often implement short-term measures, but fail to follow this up with substantial action. As we can see, the rockfall netting is completely inadequate here. The rocks that build up behind the net have become heavy and they pull the whole net down. And this is what happens. We start climbing up Mount Ipomio, the highest point on Ischia where the landslide began. We met up with an expert in urban planning. Our guides show us that the infrastructure once used to regulate the flow of water on the slopes of Mount Ipomio has been neglected for decades. 
Ты We finally reached the deep crater left by the landslide. It's hard to believe, but according to our expert, the houses swept away weren't even classed as being in a high-risk zone. This area has been classified as low risk. This map drawn up by the Central Campania Basin Authority was published in 2015 as an update to the 2002 edition. If there had been a real update, these houses down there would have been evacuated in 2009, when the first landslide hit Casamichola and killed one person. Over the past 15 years, Ischia has grown exponentially. Not even the most basic level of town planning was drawn up. Will yet another landslide lead to a redesign of the entire island? The acting mayor of Casamichola gave us her thoughts. It's still early to tell how much it will change, but it certainly will change. We need to reinforce the mountainside, the water catchment system, and so on. We hope that these changes will be adopted quickly. Residents are left with very little aside from hope for the future. Hundreds are living in hotels or are staying with friends and relatives whilst weather warnings become more frequent. What are you asking the authorities for? Please don't ask me this. I live in Italy. You're better off not asking. It's no use asking the state for help. Ischia is an extreme case, but 94% of Italian municipalities are located in natural risk areas. As we finish our journey through Italy, it seems that the country is lagging behind in terms of disaster prevention. And because of this inaction, its citizens are paying the price. Our next stop is a country hit by extraordinary floods just over a year ago, Germany. Around the R Valley, you see nothing but building sites and freshly painted houses. The whole area affected by the 2021 floods is now being entirely rebuilt. Even the houses a few meters away from the riverbanks will be restored for residents. Normal floodings are not a problem anymore because we, we seal the foundations, but uh, floods like the last one, uh, you, you can't prepare for them. In July 2021, a wave of torrential rain killed over 200 people across Europe. Germany was hit hardest. Over 130 people lost their lives. In the winemaking region of the Ar Valley, flash floods destroyed entire villages and most of the infrastructure. Rebuilding in Germany is a rapid process, unlike in Italy. But what's the strategy? Thousands of homes were damaged, but only 34 houses won't be rebuilt due to flood risk. A local geographer says the identified risk areas have been updated since July's floods, but this isn't changing construction plans. Most houses are rebuilt and the status quo is restored, so to speak. And that's a big mistake, because we have the opportunity to rethink how and where we should build in this area with a high flood risk. In my opinion, this opportunity was missed. As is the case in Italy, residents prefer to cope with the risk rather than move. We met a winemaker recently back in business after the floods. It took him over one year to recover. The water was here at this level. 
It destroyed everything you could think of. And most of all, there was dirt everywhere. Despite the losses he faced, Mark feels lucky. But he's still traumatized by memories of the disaster. My friend's family were washed away with the whole house. The whole house floated away like a boat. The rebuilding of the Ar Valley could serve as an example for other countries in flood risk areas, says the former mayor of Altenar. Her town was severely damaged last year. Now working as a local representative, she's facing both social and technical challenges. It always sounds good to say that you should demolish it and not rebuild it. But what's the alternative? The people have their land there, their homes, and it's not easy to find somewhere else. We need to be realistic about what can happen. Infrastructure will take a long time to rebuild. And we're not only talking about bridges, roads and railways. Riverbed management is also key to protecting residents as fast-flowing rivers need more space to expand in case of heavy rain. A few decades ago, rivers were made tight and narrow. What you can already sort of see here is that the R has been allowed to meander again. It's allowed to take different shapes, which helps to lower the flow rate. We leave the R Valley to visit Cologne. Over the past 30 years, this city has developed one of the world's most advanced systems to protect how a fast flood can spread and to keep the Rhine under control. So these signs indicate two major floods that happened just 13 months apart. Yes, exactly. That was the point where um, People realized that the next flood might be around the next corner and so decisions had to be taken to prevent uh, further flooding. You can't, you can't avoid a flood happening, but you can reduce the damage. It took 11 years for Cologne to design and set up a mobile protection system against floods. But today, over 70 kilometers of riverbank are protected by transportable barriers. We were shown a small demonstration to see what happens in case of an alert. It has a protection level of about 11.3 meters of Cologne gouge. That's uh, approximately 1.7 meters higher than the highest flood we had in 1993 and 1995. How many kilometers of these barriers do you have around Cologne? We do have, in fact, 10.7 kilometers of mobile system within the protection system of Cologne that uh, starts at a level of, let's say, 60 centimeter high walls up to 4.2 meter high walls, depending on the location where they are set up. A flood forecast tells the administration what locations are at risk and when. It takes about 50 hours and up to 500 people to set up the entire defense system. An ideal approach for big and slow rivers, but not for fast flowing ones like the R. Especially in smaller rivers, the effects of heavy rainfall are very dramatic and more severe. In Germany, like in Italy, it's up to local authorities to manage the response. In both countries, experts say there's a need for a stronger national guidance. That's the kind of approach that France has adopted, as we'll soon find out. This is the estuary that separates L'Aiguillon from La Faute sur Mer. Here, 13 years ago, the sea pushed past the dam with winds of up to 160 kilometers per hour. In its path, the storm left death and destruction. It was an extreme weather event, but it forced authorities to come up with new strategies to protect the coast and its residents. The site of the disaster where 29 people lost their lives looks completely different today. 
it's now classed as a red area where houses can no longer be built. Francois, the head of Zinthia's Victims Association, told us that since the storm, this dam has been built up. At the time, there were 600 houses here, which were submerged by between 2.5 to 2.8 meters of water. So this area was completely wiped out and the houses were demolished? Yes, completely. They were bought by the state. It was a bit complicated. There was no expropriation. People agreed to sell their homes. They didn't have much choice. Thirteen years after the storm, it's still possible to live in some flood risk areas. But to protect its citizens, France has developed a complex system of laws, policies and committees. Due to a new French regulation, old buildings in at-risk coastal areas have had to adapt and new ones are built differently. There are different types of measures, from a non-return valve to prevent water from rising through the pipes, to creating a refuge floor or level of external access. Elevated refuge floors are slowly becoming part of the coastal landscape. However, in the most vulnerable area, only 20% of the houses have been modified so far. The government is now increasing its financial aid to encourage homeowners to make their properties safer. Elizabeth lives in Léguillon sur Mer. She is the only one in her neighborhood with a refuge floor. We are in denial. We were in denial. It couldn't possibly happen. I've still heard people say it won't happen again. I think it will. When Zinthia hit, Elizabeth lived in La Faute sur Mer, in the area subsequently known as the Death Basin. Her house was demolished by the government for safety reasons. This was the house. To go upstairs, we had to go out through the bottom. I lost my husband, my grandson. We were stuck in the house, and the water kept rising. My husband died, I think, of a heart attack. He was sick. My grandson, he froze to death. Since Storm Cynthia hit, France has placed more emphasis on restoring and strengthening dams in coastal regions. This dam, close to the River Ley and to the sea, is being repaired thanks to the National Flood Prevention Plan. The structures are under increasing pressure, so today we're designing structures for an event that represents Cynthia plus 20 centimetres. We take Cynthia at 20 centimetres at sea and project these levels onto the coast to size up our dams. Around the River Ley, around 40 kilometres of dam still needs to be restored. Some areas in the nearby town of La Tranche-sur-Mer are still at risk. The work should start either this year or next year, but today they are in the same situation as before. Around 100 million euros has been invested in the Vendée department to restore major flooding infrastructure. Despite all this, a local environmental activist says the coastal towns are still not ready to face the effects of climate change. I don't think that there is enough awareness of the reality of risks and the worsening of those risks to say that things will be fine going forward. We have to act faster, says the activist. Only last year, natural disasters cost France 10 billion euros, the highest sum since 1999. And much more than money is at stake here. What is certain is that in the future, we will see other events like Cynthia and therefore the urbanized areas on the coast, in areas that are really at risk, will once again be confronted with the question of whether or not protection is possible, without there being any certainty about this capacity to absorb the shocks of the future. As we end our journey, it seems that our cities are facing a race against the clock. And as it stands, 
Climate change is happening faster than we are able to cope with.